Hey, we're going to start another chapter of Dr. Wombrand's book on the answer to the atheist handbook. And this one's called The Difficulty of Being an Atheist. Hopefully you've caught the other ones. This is some good stuff for our day and age for sure. Um, it says we have set ourselves to go as far as possible towards an encounter with our atheist friends. Atheism can be the passage from false religion to spiritual truth. Atheism is one age is generally the result of the superstitions of a hypocritical religion in the preceding one. But then it is a passage. Do not stop in the passage. We also know that not all who call themselves atheists really are. Baron Holbach one of the 18th century renowned atheist philosophers called God his personal enemy. For him, nothing other than nature existed. Nature, according to him, creates everything, being self uncreated, being itself uncreated. But that is, this is exactly what we believe about God. Nature is infinite and eternal. Again, this is what we believe about God. In nature, there are laws, order, and purpose, spirit. The more you read what Halbach understands by nature, the more you have the impression that he has only substituted the word nature for God. For whom he had an aversion, God he had an aversion for. This is not real atheism. For many, atheism is only a screen for the frustration of an unsuccessful religious search. Their atheism is repressed religiosity, and it is our fault that we do not know how to communicate with them. Christians should unlearn Christianese, quoted, when they deal with unbelievers. Doctors use an idiom of, of their own when they are amongst themselves. But the wise physician, when dealing with a patient, uses a language understood by him. Not all teachers of religion nor all Christians know how to make their faith intelligible to those who are not used, used to biblical language. This keeps many away from religion. Therefore, we must have understanding. We also sympathize with the burdens of the atheist. To be an atheist is surely much more difficult than to be religious. Atheists have a very extracting belief. They reproach us for believing without proof. We will present the proofs of our faith in this book, but who, but who will ever be able to prove the stupendous dogmas of atheism? Its first dogma is, from eternity there has existed matter in continual movement, which has created life. How do atheists know this? The renowned astronomer Hoyle adduces proof to the contrary. In Nature of the Universe, he writes, To avoid the issue of creation, it would be necessary for all the material of the universe to be infinitely old. And this cannot be for a practical reason. For if this were so, there would be no hydrogen left in the universe. As I think I demonstrated when I spoke about the insides of the stars, hydrogen is steadily converted into helium throughout the universe, and this conversion is a one-way process. That is to say, hydrogen cannot be produced in any appreciable quantity through the breakdown of other elements. How is it then that the universe consists almost entirely of hydrogen? If matter were infinitely old, this would quite be or this would be quite impossible. So we see that the universe being what it is, the creation issue simply cannot be dodged. We also know that according to the second law of thermodynamics, in all observable physical processes processes in the universe, some energy becomes less available. The universe is running down. Since it is far from run down, it must have had a beginning. The Bible speaks scientifically when it says the things which are seen are temporary. What proofs do atheists have to the contrary? What makes them believe that matter has existed forever? What proof that it has always been moving? 
Yet you have to believe it, and believing it is very hard. It is hard to believe that there is no God, no loving Father, no purpose in things, no hope for our life, which soon runs out. Is everything a chance gathering of elementary particles? The communist writer Anatole France wrote, Chance is perhaps the pseudonym of God when he did not wish to sign. Men are not atheists in times of great crisis or danger, in moments of ecstasy from love or the contemplation of beauty. Rare are the atheists who remain godless on their deathbed. Some, it is true, continue to play their role to the end. They would not confess with their mouths, even in the last moments, the doubts by which they all are they, um, which they are assailed. But whenever a skilled religious personality is near the deathbed of such a man, he succeeds in bringing him to conversion. A major crisis in life also may shake an atheist's convictions. When the Russian Revolution was in greatest danger, as Petersburg, Peters, Petersburg was surrounded by the troops, the anti-communist general Kornilov Lenin delivered a speech in which he exclaimed several times, Die Bogé, may God grant that we escape. It might be object that this is a common saying in the Russian language, but Lenin never used it except in this moment of deep crisis. Three men led the war against the Nazis, Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin. The first two were Christians. Churchill was, has written six volumes of memoirs about this war. The name God never appears on the lips of the two believers. It is only Stalin who says, May God give success to the operation, Torch, the invision, invasion of North Africa. The past belongs to God, and so on. M Mayo was a... Maya, Mayo was a fierce atheist, but in 1936, when a member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party fell, um, or, or when he was a member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, he fell very sick. He demanded to be baptized and received baptism from the hand of a nun. When his wife was shot by the troops in Cheyenne, uh, Kaishek, he composed a religious poem, The Immortals. In an interview with the American newspaper Snow in 1971, he said, Soon I will have to appear before God. Now, such incidents are very instructive. If you are an engineer who has built a bridge, the fact that a cat passes over the bridge is not proof that the bridge is good. A train must pass over it. We cannot consider atheistic doctrine profitable if it is only a fair-weather teaching. Zinoviev, president of the Communist International, died at the hands of Stalin. His last words were, Listen, Israel, our God is the only God. Yagoda, Soviet Minister of Interior Affairs, also killed by Stalin, said, There must be a God because my sins have reached me. Yaroslavsky, who was founder and president of the League of the Godless in the USSR, told Stalin from his deathbed, Burn all my books. Look, he is here. He waited for me. Burn all my books. Sitting in communist prisons with communists jailed by their own comrades in party purges, I have been witness myself to similar scenes. I would recommend that our atheist friends ponder these things. So a really good chapter, for sure, about the difficulty of being an atheist, right? And he brings up some good points about when the chips are down, um, who do you really go to? And he brings up uh, some people in Russia who, during their times of crisis, cried out to God. But who can the atheist cry out to? And so that's kind of what this chapter is about. So cool. Thanks for listening this week. We'll 
do it next week as well. Bye-bye.